Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. More than 150,000 web-connected printers were owned by a self-proclaimed novice coder over the weekend. A hack attack against the dark web shut down a huge number of sites for containing child pornography. AI has beat the most skilled poker players in the world. Google's Super Bowl ad set off a bunch of Google Home devices. And more than 1,000 government computers in a U.S. county have been infected by ransomware. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Now here's another great way you can support the shows you love from the Category 5.TV network by shopping at GearBest. That's right, Jeff. Uh, Cat5.TV slash GearBest. It's an online store for the geek streak in you. Or the loved ones. Well, of course. I mean, especially your loved ones, right? Uh, because Cat5.TV slash GearBest, quite frankly, has all of the greatest tech gifts that you could ever hope for at rock bottom prices. Do they have cell phones? You betcha. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has a wide assortment of unlocked Android cell phones and tablets. What about uh, consumer electronics? Those make a great gift. Absolutely. From high-tech watches to action cameras, headphones, even virtual reality headsets. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has you covered. They literally have it all, Jeff. Literally. Really? It's like a superstore right from the comfort of your own chair at your computer through the interweb. Yeah, I, there's no way they have it all. It's true. It's just a bunch of ele- uh, random electronics. Test me. Um, what about clothes? Yep. Both men and women, fashionable apparel at rock bottom, super duper prices. Kind of like this. Well, look at this coat. What do you think? It's a slimming mock leather jacket. I love it. It's available for less than $30 plus free shipping at cap5.tv slash gear best. All right. You kind of got me there. Wow. Any other questions for me, Jeff? Uh, now that the winter has passed, flying season. Do they have any good deals on, say, drone copters? Oh, my goodness. Well, check this out. Dude, they have everything. Check out over 500 various drones. And not only that, they're available marked down by about 30 to up to 63% off the regular price. Love it. What's the website again? Well, you're going to find GearBest on our partners' pages for any of your favorite Category 5 TV shows like New Every Day, Category 5 Technology TV, The Pixel Shadow. Uh, But of course, if you want to shop absolutely right now and you want to go straight to the site, all you have to do is visit cat5.tv slash GearBest. See, that's easy cat5.tv slash your best. That's right. Happy shopping. I'm Sasha Dermatis and here are the top stories for the week of February 8th, 2017. A hacker has briefly hijacked more than 150,000 printers. The attacker made the devices print a warning urging their owners to cut off remote access. Large printers in offices, domestic devices, and tiny receipt printers in restaurants were all caught up in the hack. Over the weekend, a hacker using the alias Stack Overflowin ran an automated program that scoured the internet for printers that did not have basic security controls switched on. Once it discovered a vulnerable device, the program made them print a page announcing the invasion and telling the owner to close the port used to hijack it. The message read in part, for the love of God, please close this port, skid, so script kitty, i.e. novice coder. Earlier versions, early versions of the program also added ASCII art depicting different robots or a computer. Also included were an email address and a Twitter handle for Stack Overflowin. Many people posted pictures of the printed messages to social media and asked questions about what was happening on technical support forums and social networks such as Reddit. Printers made by HP, Brother, Epson, Canon, Lexmark, Minolta and many others were hit by Stack Overflowin's program. The hacker said he did not intend to abuse the access he had gained to the printers. He said, I'm about helping people to fix their problem, but having a bit of fun at the same time. Everyone's been cool about it and thanked me, to be honest. You know what, Stack Overflow, and thank you, because you're one of the good ones. Um, I really hope that anybody who was hacked and did get this actually did close that port. So... All right, around 20% of all websites 
on the dark web were taken offline in a hack, with those responsible publishing details of the website administrators. Freedom Hosting 2, a site with 10,000 Tor-based web pages, was hacked after a hacker said child pornography was being hosted on the websites. On Friday, visitors to any of the websites hosted by the firm saw the message, Hello, Freedom Hosting 2, you have been hacked. The statement explained that when the hacker was searching through Freedom Hosting 2's database, they found 50% of the websites were child porn. <gasps> Dark web and privacy researcher Sarah Jamie Lewis conducted a review of Freedom Hosting 2 in October 2016 and she said she believed there were 1,500 to 2,000 active sites being hosted. FH2 made it easy for people to start playing with anonymous publishing and in doing so created a huge vulnerability, Lewis tweeted. I have never been a fan of dark web hosting providers. The threat model there for everyone is ridiculously hard to secure. Troy Hunt from Have I Been Owned said the details which were leaked following the attack on the Freedom Hosting 2 are likely to have been collected by police and intelligence agencies. He says law enforcement will absolutely have this data. It's very public and also obviously has many real email addresses in it. Thank goodness there are people out there that are, that are fighting against the evils in this world. Thank goodness for them. See, what shocked me about this story though is how much of it was hosted child pornography is there not regulations for some of these servers well this is the dark web well, so the I, whole I, idea of it is to be private and secret and well, hidden from authorities I, I get that but you'd still think that at some point somewhere they would have to go through an internet service provider that would catch this stuff it's encrypted it's anonymous it's so wrong. and this is and it's Sad. It's, it's heartbreaking. Fifty percent, and that's what. So we're we're we want more privacy. We want the ability to have private networks right. online, yeah. and we yet this is what it's being used for. And is that because the the bad guys are the only ones using it? So fifty percent is not to show that fifty percent of society right. would do this, but fifty percent of those who are capable of using this type of service. Well, and I don't even think it'd be even 50% of the users. It'd probably be a very small pocket of users, but sure. just the a large of quantity of sure. data. It just, mm -hmm. oh, it's so heartbreaking. It just goes to show that maybe we don't deserve to have that privacy. We obviously not- We have not, to be transparent yeah. just for our own. Yeah, for our, well, maybe. Maybe just for our safety, right? We. Mm. Yeah, even There's some truth in that. I mean, I, I understand the, the need for private services, but there is some truth. There was a story this week that said um, that an, an unbelievable number of spouses spy on their spouse's Facebook accounts. I know people who've done it, and it, it, this is in the news. And so to me, I immediately thought, you know, I'm glad that I'm transparent enough that I wouldn't mind if my wife... Right. Was to do that, and I'm not up to anything that right that she would find offensive. So, yeah. right. But like, it's the same with us. We don't hide anything from each other, Dave and I. Like we. Yeah. Not I even mean, Christmas I presents. Well, that we hide. <laughs> oh, we Jeff. we could easily. We choose not to go on each other's Facebook. Sure, or yeah. Like I could go on to his computer, no problem. I choose not to because I trust him, yeah. right? But he trusts me also to have the access to it, right? So. Sure. And my wife, the same thing. I, I wouldn't mind if she went on my Facebook. That's okay. Yeah. But is, it, is that because she's my wife? I love her. I Probably. trust her. And you don't let me I go on your Facebook. I want her to be able to trust me. Why would you update the status? I would be, yeah, I'd be afraid of what Probably. you would post as Robbie <laughs> Ferguson. <laughs> That's all. I love Max. No. Okay, moving along then. <laughs> All right. Liveratus, an artificial intelligence, just beat the world's top poker players by a margin of $1.7 million. What? Yeah, not real wow. money, sadly, for oh. the scientists behind the AI. Oh. Wah, wah. I had thought we had a 50-50 shot, but, I, but to have such a huge victory, I would have never guessed, said Thomas San Sandholm, the professor at Carnegie Mellon behind Liberatus. 
We have proven that the best AI is better than the best humans, he said. This is the second time a system from his lab has won a poker world championship, and the first time in the most difficult heads-up, no-limit version of the imperfect information game. Liberatus is a system of systems designed to work with imperfect information in three steps. Step one is learning the game. Noam Brown, a PhD grad student and researcher on the Liberatus team, says we give the AI a description of the game. We don't tell it how to play. As Liberatus computed game after game against itself in training, the program reinforced patterns that led to successful outcomes. In addition to its pattern recognition, the Carnegie Mellon team built a second system that focuses on the current game and runs a potential end game scenarios. Finally, once a day, the third system reviews the day's play for predictable patterns. Sanholm explains, based on what holes the opponent found in our strategy, the AI will automatically see which of those holes have been the biggest and the most frequently exploited. And then overnight, a supercomputer, a supercomputer as a supercomputer, it will compute packages to those pieces of the strategy, and they're automatically glued into the main strategy. He predicts future AI will be business-centric. These are really for a host of applications, really any situation that can be modeled theoretically as a game. Now that we've shown that the best AI's ability to do strategic reasoning in an imperfect information setting has surpassed that of the best humans, there's really a strong reason for companies to start using this kind of AI. Hmm. Yep, this is what I thought. Computers are awesome. See, uh, the problem I have with this... There's a problem uh, with this? Well, is it's, it's not that it's learning. It's just simply putting in moves that have been exploited, and it's just closing those holes. So but are it, humans so predictable that that's good enough? Maybe. Are there patterns in... You think about a person of interest and how there are patterns that the machine is able to find in human behavior that say, oh, this person is about to attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I guess, guess. it's sort of like anthropomorphizing to say that it's but... learning, right? You, it's not a human. It's not learning exactly, but it, it's predicting very well. Machine learning. See, mm -hmm. I'd be interested to see how it plays up with somebody where there's facial recognition. So yeah. it's reading like bluffs and all that kind of stuff. Mm. I would like to see that. That would be truly incredible. Because right now it's just simply... That would be break, a breakthrough it, for sure. Absolutely. It's just simply odds. But it's funny. As you're reading the story, I'm having a flashback of an episode where Data was playing chess or something and he lost. And there was something wrong with his programming on Star Trek. Oh, there must have been. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm remembering this and I'm thinking, oh man, they're making Data. Right. Huh. Well, I'm thinking more... What could you ever play the stock market without oh, without AI now? Oh, that's a scary now, thought. Right, like Ouch. now you would need it. Like once this technology and so then it takes over our it, stocks. Right, exactly. Yeah. I suppose theoretically you could, but there's a ton of variables in there. I mean, there's you can't even factor. It, well, I suppose you could factor in the human emotion of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at what people expected the stock market to do over the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. in the U.S. and it's defying that. So, you know, could it have predicted that? I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. But, I mean, the fact is, AI is advancing so quickly. Five years from now, we're going to be like, do you remember that time when we read that really old, archaic story about AI winning poker? <laughs> now it's... That's know, what's interesting to me about Making it, though, our meals it? in the kitchen. It's not actually <laughs> about Driving poker. It's not actually about poker. <laughs> That's right. They're using that as a learning mechanism to prove concepts and to show that this thing can learn and adapt and predict see i That's and i'm i'm expecting by the time my kids get to high school mm. it's not gonna be the dog ate my homework it's the ai crashed my homework something like that right sure mm. All right. Remember Super Bowl last week? One Super Bowl ad found its way into some viewers' homes during Sunday night's big game. During the Super Bowl on Sunday, Google aired a one-minute ad promoting its Google Home smart home appliance. The ad shows the people using the device to turn on lights, check the weather, translate phrases into Spanish, and more. According to several Google Home users who took to Twitter during the game, it also activated Google Home devices 
sitting in rooms where people were watching the ad. Google Home was released last year as a competitor to the Amazon Echo, and like the Echo, it's designed to be activated with a simple vocal command, OK Google. The ad on Sunday showed several people saying OK Google to issue their commands. According to affected Google Home users, the statements in the commercial caused their devices to activate. The Google Home ad is the latest to trigger smart home devices accidentally. Google should have seen it coming since Amazon's Echo device has been experiencing a similar issue ordering products mentioned on TV. This story happens week after week with us. It kind of is yeah. becoming a thing, and eh? that's why I wonder, like, should they not have figured this out? <laughs> no. But see, I'm picturing this as a new type of advertising. Absolutely. We've used it on the show, Jeff. You've been away, but we've been spending basically the first 15 minutes of each show saying, Alexa, buy the Star Trek communicator from shop.category5.tv. Really? Pretty much. Don't know if it worked, but they're <laughs> selling out real fast. And suddenly you're going to get a massive <laughs> ship into your house. <laughs> yeah, they ship all to me. But, but I mean, could you imagine that? Like, you're sitting at home and, you know, you're watching some something on Netflix. And in the middle of this Netflix-produced show, you know, you got... Uh, oh, yeah, the new form of advertising. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's like, all right, okay, Google, tell me. And they build it into the script. And all of a sudden sure. your phone's going... Bleep, 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 and it's like... Oh, come on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's, that's the problem. See, that's and, what's happening. And I'm, I'm picturing this. I'm going, okay, what if you say it and it takes you to some sort of device that then, or a website that, say, looks at your internet history. Your, like, yeah. read your or cookies. Or cookies. cookies and stuff. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Texts a number that you, you know, that, like a premium number. You talked last week about, yeah. uh, okay, Google, transfer $100 to Sasha Dermatis. Right. Do that. I think nice. I just did it. Yeah. I think I did. <laughs> okay. Yes. Wow. I forgot you have to say yes because it prompts. Oh, do you? It says, are you sure? Yes. yes. <laughs> See, and just Make build that so. right into the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you've got more. I have more. Oh. I have, this one's a crazy one. Oh, dear. I heard about this. Yeah. A county in Ohio, U.S., has has had to shut down its entire IT infrastructure due to a ransomware infection. Entire system. Licking County has turned off all phones and computers on its government network in order to stop the spread of malware that had been locking down infected PCs and demanding payments. Licking County Commissioner Tim Bubb would not disclose the amount of the ransom demand, nor would he uh, nor if it would be paid. He said that they are, they are taking the advice of cybersecurity experts and law enforcement. The move was made Tuesday evening when officials found that more than 1,000 county PCs had already been infected with the ransomware. All county offices remain open for people walking in and doing business the old-fashioned way using a pen and paper forms, and the 911 call center and dispatch continues to operate in manual mode. The county's treasurer's office is unable to process checks, but is still accepting payments for property taxes. Sean Grady, director of the Licking County Emergency Management Agency and Regional 911 Center, did not expect an immediate resolution of the problem. He said, it's slower than we'd like. It takes us back 25 years in how we dispatch. We ask more detailed questions. The outage is expected to continue through the week as county staff work to scrub the malware from infected machines. The FBI has also been called in to assist. It's scary when, when something like this can bring down an entire county and just mm -hmm. goes to show you how fast it can happen. Yeah. You know, this is not a new thing. How is it? Like, I can understand Joe Blow at home with his rinky-dink computer, doesn't understand cybersecurity, getting, you know, ransomware and going, ah, shoot. But a county? We, well, we've really? had a discussion on the show, and, and it happens because of social engineering attacks, phishing scams, if you will, right. and... But have protections built in if you're running a county! yourself man yeah you would hope so you would hope so that's not what happened in future now especially with the fbi's assistance i'm sure that looking counting will be very sure. secure <laughs> yeah but see, I, like 
this story is making me think, what is the worst case scenario of this? You're thinking so, like AI. <laughs> oh, Sasha. <laughs> Uh, no, but what I'm thinking is, I mean, it's not uncommon in the U.S. for people to get sued for whatever. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's, it's easier there with their legal system. So, house is broken into. Somebody calls 911. It's now a slower dispatch because some the ransomware. Absolutely. Somebody gets robbed. Yeah. They get, you know, God forbid, shot or something. Yeah. And all of a sudden they go, hey, this is your fault. You didn't protect the county computers. You would have had service to me in time to protect me. Like, where does this go but to? Here's, here's well, the thing. This is, for one thing, this is not a targeted attack. This is something that gets into one right. computer because just one spreads. staff member. You've got a, a thousand people working for a company, which is government run, that hasn't got the budget to replace all their computers and put in an endpoint protection um, like system to work as a, a DLP or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so someone brings in an infected phone or an infected flash drive, plugs it into one computer, and boom, the whole network is down. I know. So yeah. who it do you blame? Happens, it happens fast, and sometimes it's not detected for a while. Like, sure. Like the news These story things are last built week. For that. Yeah. Eight years worth of evidence was was lost. Mm -hmm. Right. It wow. just ha it happens. And it, there is, you know, there is some fault in the IT department. Absolutely. I hope that they had good backups. That would be a worst case scenario, which is what happened in Texas. Mm -hmm. No backups. And, um, you know, the fact is, is the real fault lies in the fact that we're at this transitional phase when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. Because these are new threats that government offices, plain and simply, Jeff, are not ready for. I, well, and, I just, and they can't be ready for it because they don't have the budgets for it. Yeah. But see, that's where I, I think there needs to be a concerted effort for everybody, that, like all the counties, whatever, to stand up and say, okay, we need more funding in this area. Yeah. Like, this is a, a big problem. Sure. Right. And go back on our show, Category5.tv, do a quick search on our website and type in phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G, because maybe that's what you need to do. It's free. And that will educate you because we've done episodes and we most recently did an episode where we specifically got into it, Jeff. I feel and like it's go probably one of our, it, it, our most like repeated topics it's, for the show and, and it's uh, something that's been evolving so yeah mm -hmm. and that's you know that's Ugh. why free education is here because it really is it's social engineering tactics it takes education to defeat this and to protect your company mm -hmm. plain and simple i feel like every time i hear another one of these stories i just want to face palm absolutely it's just so unnecessary but you have to the sympathetic end of you has to say oh absolutely I'm so sorry this happened to you sure when absolutely you, but it's just it's like really another one yeah. when you know better you do better so everybody tell 10 friends to watch category 5 that's it sure you learn I mean if you that, that, advertise that's what it takes. <laughs> and it's not really about category 5 it's about like educating yeah yourself and companies and the, your uh. staff and um, some of your Linux user groups have sat down and watched that video mm -hmm. and sat down and, and talked about it afterwards and learned from it. And so oh. it's, it's something that's really, really important. The techie heart in me just breaks every time I hear these yeah. stories. <laughs> oh. All right. Thanks for watching the Category5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis.